Hello, in this video we're going to be solving stack 0 from protostellar exploit exercises. Uh, if you do not know how to get this, uh, you can go online. They have a nice little tutorial here. Go to download and protostar about how to access this. And then if you go to the protostar general about, you'll know how to log in as user. So I'm going to go ahead and start the virtual machine here. Wait for it. Okay. Alright, then we're gonna use live. Just wait for it to boot. Alright. Gonna log in with user and user. Okay, then we'll run bash. Now we'll go to the where the problems are located. So this is in opt protostar bin. So we'll take a look at what we have. Actually. Okay. You notice here that we have uh, a bunch of exercises that are also found on the website here in the right column. And if we go and look at the first stack one, stack zero, uh, we're going to go ahead and try to see if we can beat that one. So let's take a look at the about. This so introduces the concept that memory can be accessed outside of its allocated region how the stack variables are laid out and that modifying outside of the allocated memory can modify program execution. And we are already here, um, and we look at the code. Immediately we try to identify what uh, variables we have uh, on the stack. Uh, we have an int here, and it's volatile because if the compiler sees that modified is not actually possible to be modified in the code, then it will not um, uh, actually even allocate any space for it, I think. It will just, if you set it to zero here, then every time it sees modified, then it will just be zero. So this will never be executed no matter what. Um, or this one here. Um, but uh, since it's volatile, that means uh, there may be a way for us to change it, which we will. Then we have a buffer of size 64, modify 0, set to 0, then we use gets, the dangerous function here. Uh, and user input is placed into the 64 byte buffer. Uh, buffer. Then modify is checked to see if it's 0, then we have not done our job. We are asked to try again, otherwise we've changed modified. When you take a look at this and you're like, well, there's no way, like there's no user input for modified. How in, how in the world do we change modified? Well, this is a classic example, a very basic example of a buffer overflow, in which case we can take advantage of this gets function um, to basically write over modified and change its value. Because gets does not do any length checking on buffer, so we can write as much as we want to it and nothing will really happen. Um, so, another function that uh, may have this problem is uh, strcpy, string copy, uh, which we will probably see examples of in later uh, levels. So let's go take a look at this, and let's tr just run the program real quick. Uh, so, just take an arbitrary, just ask for input, so I'll put uh, hello. And we are asked to try again because modified was zero. To exploit this, let's go in and GDB it. GDB is the new debugger, and this allows us to look at the disassembly and interact with the program uh, in that way. So, first thing, we want to set the disassembly flavor to Intel, simply because it's a lot cleaner, and it, uh, yeah, just looks a lot better. So, we'll disassemble main, and here is what we get. So if we look at this function, we see what happens is a push EBP and then a move EBP uh, from ESP. 
And this is a very typical entrance into a procedure. Uh, basically what it does is just sets up the stack frame for this procedure main. Um, and right now you can see that EBP points to the location on the stack where the old EBP was. So the original EBP that was that's pushed at, at the first address in main. And then we have an AND ESP hex F F F F F F F bunch of S in the zero. And you may be wondering what that does. Well, if you recall, the AND basically it's a bitwise AND. Um, and when this execution, when this instruction is executed, uh, basically the last four bits will be all cleared by the zero. Everything else will remain unchanged because the way the AND works. Uh, basically what this does is align ESP with a four uh, word uh, boundary and this makes it a little bit nicer uh, as you'll see. So um, next instruction we subtract 60 from ESP and then we move uh, 0 into ESP plus hex 5C. No idea what that is supposed to do. Actually we do because if we look at this we have a modified variable that is equal to zero. And the interesting thing about this is that um, this instruction here, ESP plus hex 5C, that must be the address of modified because that's the basically instruction that moves zero in there. Uh, then we load effective address uh, EAX uh, with ESP plus hex 1C. Then we move this EAX into whatever ESP is pointing to at this point and do a call to get. Uh, yeah, so and then after that, uh, we basically test to see if EAX is, or if ESP plus X5C is zero. Um, if it is, then we have the puts. If it isn't, then we have another puts, different puts. And then we, uh, we basically exit the procedure from there. So that's the disassembly breakdown of the C uh, source code. So how are we gonna go about editing modified? In other words, editing ESP plus hex 5C. Well, we noticed that ESP isn't changed after the sub ESP plus or hex 60 uh, instruction. It is uh, basically stays the same. We're just editing what it holds. Um, so if we have some way to basically write the buffer during the gets, so we write the buffer and then overflow it into uh, ESP plus X5C, then we are perfect. Uh, we will be able to uh, overwrite modified. So 5C in hex, we know uh, that's equal to 5 times 16, which is 80, uh, plus uh, C, which is 12. So that's 92. Uh, I believe buffer is of size 64, so that's a little bit, a little bit confusing there. Uh, but we know that actually we have a Leah of EAX ESP plus hex 1C. So actually our buffer does not start at ESP; it starts at ESP plus hex 1C. Um, so the reason we know that is because EAX basically holds the address that we're going to call puts with, or, or sorry, not puts, uh, gets in that line there. So we just have to take the difference between these two addresses and then write four more. And we see that the difference between those 5C and 1C is 40. So 40 is 64. So we just have to write 68 um, stuff to the buffer. As long as the last four bits are non-zero, then we will overwrite it. So after looking at that, we go back here. We see if we can do a Python instruction. So we'll print some byte. Most uh, typically it's going to be a capital A. Uh, and we'll use that as our input to stack zero and see what happens. So yay, we have changed the modified variable. We have beat the level essentially because the last four A's have overwritten the um, modified variable. Now if we go back here, and I want to try something else, if we do 64, we see that we have not changed the modified variable because our uh, 
our A's have not overflowed the buffer. Even if we do something like 65, we'll have one more byte written we have changed because, as you can imagine, the memory holds the last, uh, the modified variable will be written with basically zeros except for 41 in the last spot. So yeah, that is the uh, stack zero exploit. It's very, very simple. Um, you just basically, in fact, if you do a lot, if you type a lot more, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, you'll still get the same uh, result. Um, well, actually, if you type too much, you might have a, another problem that we'll, we'll discover in the later uh, exploits. But essentially, all you have to do is overwrite modified by overflowing the buffer. And that is uh, buffer overflow in a nutshell. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in uh, stack one.